Just be glad for all you have that's in today. Hey everyone, Connie here, and welcome to my blind reaction to Motorcycle 100 Season 2, Episode 6. So yeah, it seems like it's uh, been a little bit because of uh, just this past weekend being taken off and everything. Um, well, basically the entire last half, uh, second half of last week and the weekend. Um, just as a reminder for anyone who may not have known why that all happened, um, in the middle of last week, I believe it was on Wednesday, my father uh, was working out and he ended up hurting his arm. Um, he pulled a tendon and um, was having some pains from it. And when he went to the, when he went to the, um, not not straight up like, well, I guess you could just say hospital, just say hospital for the sake of these. When he went to the hospital, um, he was told basically, oh, it'll be fine, it'll heal on its own, but you have to take uh, the rest of the week off just to be safe. Um, no heavy lifting, that kind of stuff. Um, just don't irritate it in any way, basically. And so he had to take the rest of the week off, and so I decided personally that I was going to cut things uh, out for, that, for the rest of the week, because... As I mentioned, it, it's possible to record in my room, but I'd really rather not if I don't have to. Um, the only time I'll, I, I think I want, I, I'd be willing to record in my room is if uh, the temperature is in 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 my room is like uh, is okay at the moment. Because as I mentioned before, it traps in temperature. If it's really cold out, like it gets really fucking cold in there, <laughs> and I'd rather not just constantly bundle up uh, with all of these layers just to be able to record a simple video, you know? Um, so, yeah, the only time I think I'd really uh, be willing to do that is if the temperature is okay enough to where I wouldn't need to bundle up anything anymore. Um, and if it's something I really need to get to. But I also decided to take off uh, those days last week and during the weekend um, because I noticed uh, especially when taking them off. I noticed uh, basically the very next day that uh, I, I've been put, I, I, this is an issue I have a lot, but I've been pushing myself too hard again with these reactions. Um, it happens very often to where I, I just try to do too many reactions at once. Uh, trying to do two reactions both on Saturday and Sunday each, it was, it was stupid of me, to put it simply. It wasn't a smart idea. And then to do all the other reactions during the week as well, it just wasn't going to work out. So I needed to cut back and I needed to change things around a bit, um, which also helps to freshen out the channel, make things a feel a little more fresh and new and everything, which as you know, I'm all about. I want the channel to keep feeling that way instead of just feeling like the same old, same old, uh, every day, every week, every month, so on and so forth. So I decided to change up the schedule. So just as a reminder, again, for those who may not have seen the videos uh, regarding that, um, Sunday is now Kakiguru EXX, Monday is now Mob Psycho, Tuesday is both Loud House and OKKO, OK Wednesday is uh, the poll reactions, so both cartoon and anime reactions that are chosen by poll. And currently, that means being Puppy Cat and Wandering Sun. Thursday is One Piece. Friday is going to be the uh, Mega Stream Donation Reward Day. So any reactions that are being watched as a reward for Mega Streams from the past or present. Uh, currently, it will be returning to Dofus. And Saturday will still be JoJo. So as you know, I mainly just had to take out... Um, two shows, Carmen San Diego and Young Justice Outsiders. And I chose those two, uh, Carmen San Diego, because uh, while I was three episodes into it, I felt it wasn't like super high priority for me at the moment. Um, and Young Justice Outsiders, I had only done one episode so far, so it definitely wasn't a high priority. Um, but they will be coming back. Both of them are not dropped, they are just uh, put on hold for the time being. So they will be coming back as soon as I can get back to them. I've already fit them into a slot for the future. Like, uh, they'll, they'll be replacing something when that finishes. Um, and we'll kind of go from there. I, I don't know, like, 100% exactly how things are going to go at this point. 
but I'm going to try to keep it as cut down as possible. I'm even considering maybe like, uh, I since I know uh, Loud House and OKKO, one of those two, maybe both will end up going on break again at some point, just because, you know, I don't want to react to the same things for too long. Um, probably they'll take breaks after their seasons, after I finish those the specific seasons I'm on with them, for Loud House Season 2, for OKKO Season 1. I'll take a break and then come back to the next season. Um, I'm thinking of maybe cutting that down to just one of them at a time, too. Um, I'm not 100% sure. I haven't, I'm not guaranteeing anything, but it's like maybe just like do one show each day a week, except for Wednesdays, like which will, of course, still be the poll day. But we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Um, something I think I forgot to mention as well, um, Let's Plays for Chrono Trigger currently and then whatever comes in the future will still be on Wednesdays. That's not changing. Because those are all uh, recorded well in advance. Uh, I record like an hour to two hours in advance and, and just cut it up and upload a piece of that each time. So, yeah. <laughs> that that one won't be too difficult to get to. Um, and then currently airing stuff, I was asked about stuff like uh, Star vs. the Forces of Evil. I will th That kind of stuff, when that comes up, I will get to as soon as I can. Because Star vs. Uh, the final season is coming up uh, soon. And I'm going to basically get to those when I can. They're not going to be on the schedule. Um, I know that She-Ra uh, is getting its second season, I believe, next month. Um, that will be scheduled. That will be put on the schedule at some point. And um, MLP... Uh, it's the final season of My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, is also coming next month. Um, we don't know an exact date, but it's sometime in April. <laughs> um, that will be added to Saturdays for the schedule as well. I'm um, just saying that right off the bat. Um, but otherwise, like stuff like Star Versus or whenever Steven Universe would come back, um, if it even is, I have no idea what's going on with that still. I don't know if that was supposed to be a season finale, a series finale. I don't know. I, I've heard conflicting reports about a possible sixth season. Um, we don't know what the movie's going to cover, so who knows. But you get the idea. That kind of stuff, um, I'll, I'll kind of just get to uh, when I can. Um, so yeah, Star Versus will not have an actual schedule uh, slot. It'll just be whenever I can get to it as well. So yeah, that is the uh, just information regarding that. I wanted to get that all out of the way. So yeah, we're on Mob Psycho. And last we left off, we had the two-part um, battle against... Uh, I already forgot his name. Um... You know, the one the one extremely powerful psychic who became an extremely powerful ghost. And Mob had a very hard time taking him down initially, and then kind of took him down way too easily. Um, there were some uh, comments that I got on my last video regarding the stuff I said. Um, like, I believe one comment was something along the lines of, like, Oh, you think this guy was strong? Wait, wait until you see what, what's coming up. Um, and then there were people, like, refuting the stuff I was saying regarding, um, the battle and the episodes and everything. Um, just keep in mind, I, I welcome those comments. I, I want to make that clear. Please, if you, if you believe these things and want to continue, um, debating or, um, just sharing your thoughts on all of that, please do. Um, I will also say, though, that they won't necessarily sway my opinion. That my opinion is my own and that I, it is formed from my experiences, from my tastes, my interests, what I, how I view good writing to be, etc., etc., as I watch. Um, and honestly, it's very rare when my opinion is swayed by what someone says. It, it has happened, but it is very rare. I, I tend to be a very opinionated person, so um, I just want to get that uh, out of the way as well. So, yeah, please feel free to share those. Feel free to share how you view this and your thoughts on it and all. 
I love to hear that kind of stuff. But just keep in mind that it won't necessarily change what I feel about it. I still feel that was a very uh, mixed uh, mini arc for the series. I, I feel like it was extremely disappointing the way they handled that. Um, I guess you could call him a villain or antagonist at least. Um, while th at the same time, the way they handled Mob was phenomenal. Um, and yeah, it was also brought to my attention that the one dude, uh, the claw guy, was from the first season. He was the one who had trapped Dimple in that jar. Uh, the same one he just trapped the, this antagonist in. I didn't put that together. It's been a while since I've actively watched the first season. I caught glimpses of it with my father and brother watching it on Toonami as it's been airing um, more recently. But I wasn't super paying attention to the claw stuff at that point. Um, and I, I completely forgot about that guy, I'll be honest. He never left an impact on me. Um, there are only a couple of the Claw, uh, characters who really left any form of impact on me, who I ever found to be any kind of interesting or, uh, good characters, to be honest. Uh, Claw was really disappointing for me in the first season, so I'm really hoping that they do some better stuff with, uh, them this season. Um... One other thing to note, I don't know what's going to happen in this episode at all, um, per usual. I am blind to the events of it, but I do know that something really big is coming up um, in, the, in the more recently aired episode, uh, or episodes, or whatever. One of, the more, one of the two most recently aired episodes, because I know people had been freaking out about it. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it actually is, but I know people have been freaking out about it and saying that it completely changes the show. And honestly, I hope I hope they're right because this season has actually been a little bit of a mixed bag. It's it's been it's been a lot uh, more interesting than season one, and there's been some definitely some heavier tones, and they're doing again amazing things with Mob, but otherwise it seems to have like little actual focus as to what's going on. Like, everything, it, it seems, it seems very episodic, but not just episodic. It almost seems like it's, uh, com like I said, completely unfocused. And after the, after what I do remember of the finale of season one, it feels like it's just kind of reverting. Like, it's not, it, it's kind of just going back to the status quo, and I feel like that's, Again, after what I do remember from season one's uh, final arc, I don't like that. I don't think it should be doing that. That makes like no sense to me to try to go back to the status quo. But again, if the if this uh, if the more recent episodes uh, everything's going to change or whatnot with this series, maybe that's a good thing. Um, I want to make it clear. Um, I don't dislike what's what we've been seeing overall with this uh, season. And I don't dislike Mob Psycho as a series, um, but it's definitely far inferior to One Punch Man, the other uh, series done by the original creator, One. Definitely far inferior. Um, and honestly, I'm just not that into it. I know, like, uh, uh, what's his face? Jeff Thew, Mother's Basement. He recently, like, uh, made this big thing about how Mob Psycho had become his favorite series of all time. I think it would beat out Anohana. Um, I skipped through a couple parts of that video, I believe, because uh, there were a couple parts that were kind of spoilery. I was told what parts to avoid, so. <laughs> but yeah, he, he mentioned that it had become his, like, favorite series and everything. Um, and it's like... I don't really see how, and, I, and and don't get me wrong, if any series is your favorite, even if I don't like it, that's perfectly fine. Digibro's favorite series is K-Own. K-Own would not even break into probably a, a top, top 30, top, probably not even top 50 for me. K-Own is not that great to me. It's not bad, but it's not that great. <laughs> There are so many shows much better than it, in my opinion. But that's the thing. It is all subjective. And 
it, it's, it is. It is all subjective. Um, quality of any product, especially media, uh, mostly media, is what I'm talking about here, is subjective. Whether it's TV, movies, video games, um, music, any of that kind of stuff. A book. The quality of all of that is subjective because... Even if it's universally loved or universally hated, if at least one person disagrees with that universal opinion, it cannot be seen as fact. And if that person legitimately believes that, if that person legitimately has points to back the, up their beliefs, then it cannot be seen as fact. It cannot be seen as objective. And that mean, and that's not just enjoyment of the series or whatever. That counts for the quality of the story, the writing, the characters, the art and animation, etc. Um, one huge example of this, um, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. There's a lot of people who despise the art style of that. My sister is one of them. She refuses to watch it because she hates the art style. Um, Rarity Dash recently begun reacting to uh, JoJo, and he doesn't like the art style. And I'll admit, when I first started watching JoJo, I almost dropped it a couple times because of the art style. But the thing is, things change. So you might become more used to the art style like I did and actually learn to, uh, in a lot of cases, appreciate it. Some people just straight up like the art style, especially because of how fitting it is to JoJo as a parody series, which JoJo very much is. It is a parody series. Um, yes, it does have its own legitimate story and characters and um, plot lines and everything, but it is still a parody. Um, and it's just, it's just some, it, it's different for different people. And another great example, like I, I can, name off the bat is Neon Genesis Evangelion. A lot of people praise it as one of the greatest anime ever made, saying it has some of the tightest writing, some of the greatest uh, story development, characterizations, um, how it changed anime. And here's the thing. I won't argue that it changed anime. Like, it influenced so much. I can't argue that. But I can argue writing, characterization, that kind of stuff. And I'm, I know I'm not the only one. I know that there are other people who don't like Evangelion, who think it's really kind of crappy. And it's all subjective, though. So yeah, that's all, that's all I'm trying to say here. I know these pre-thoughts are turning out to be a little long, but, um, well, one, I, had, I, I wanted to talk about the change in schedule and everything. Um, but also, yeah. Um, so when I'm like when I'm having like certain issues with how Mob Psycho has been going with season two so far, uh, it, it's just my opinion. If you love this, if it's your favorite series, um, or one of your favorite series, or whatever, that's perfectly fine. And I'm not going to I'm not going to judge you for it. But keep in mind that I have a different opinion. I view it differently. And again, I am not saying I dislike the series as a whole. I'm just saying that there are certain parts in this second season so far that have kind of annoyed me a little bit. That are just not really, in my opinion, being done well. Um, but again, my opinion. <laughs> so, yeah. Just trying to say just trying to say that, just trying to clear that up. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to uh, get to this either way. I'm really hoping that it does live up to things because I'll be honest. Um, I I really think that if it does continue to go the way it's going, it might be it, it might be losing a lot of my interest soon because I, I talked about before how there is that like with when I made the final video I think I is when I talked about uh, for Avengers. Uh, Earth's Mightiest Heroes, I talked about, like, uh, specifically, like, this range of uh, interest I have in a show, um, and I say how it has to, like, go below 10% to be dropped, um, and if it's, like, below 20%, basically, that means it's in danger. <laughs> um, 
but Mob Psycho is kind of hovering around the middle for me right now. I'm st like uh, pretty much right around 50%. Um, because I definitely have interest in seeing it continue, and I, I definitely think it has a great potential. But again, the second season has been irritating me a little bit. And like I said, I will not drop it unless it reaches that low point. I will not drop another series for the dumbest reasons again. I, I'm already agreeing to bring back so many different shows that I've dropped for uh, honestly less than satisfactory reasons. I will be bringing back, for example, Hilda. That will be coming back at some point. Um, and Adventure Time will be coming back at some point. Basically, any show that I dropped uh, for any other reason than no interest in continuing. That is the only reason I should ever drop a show. <laughs> but the point is, um, Mob is not there. And honestly, I don't see it ever getting to that point. Like, it would have to do something that I like really find offensive to get anywhere close to that. Like, something that I really find absolutely stupid or offensive or destructive towards the series. Um, but like I said, I don't really see it doing that. I just see it like making like these small little errors in my eyes and kind of just uh, doing what it does with that. Um, but yeah, so we're coming off of that big psychic battle. Mob has kind of made friends with that uh, formerly spoiled brat rich girl. Um, she's, she has seemed to turn things around and have a legitimate uh, apology about the way she acted and everything. Um, even if it wasn't really her, but apparently she did really act like that in real life. Um, so yeah, everything seems to have worked out. Um, and at the end, it looked like, uh, what's his face? The, uh, her father was looking at Reagan's uh, website. So that's interesting. I wonder if that's going to go anywhere. Either way, uh, we should get this started because I, I'm getting to this really late, as it is, um, due to my computer screwing up with me earlier. So I, I really should get to recording the actual reaction now. So, oh, jeez. <laughs> um, when the screen fades to black, pause this redirect and go to the description below. Follow the link to the reaction, and after you watch it, come back here to the redirect and resume play. Because after it fades to black, then it fades back in. Everything from that point forward will be my afterthoughts and will contain spoilers to the episode. So that being said, thank you so much for tuning in, and I will see you at the reaction. Okay, and we are back, and we'll begin with spoilers in 3, 2, 1, now. Um, okay, so it seems like we're entering this uh, new little arc here. Um, Mob has abandoned Reagan. He's just completely abandoned him. Because Reagan's honestly become quite a bit of a conceited asshole. And the thing is, Reagan's always been kind of conceited and kind of full of his own hype and everything, and I get that. But it, it was definitely apparent more in this season, and especially in this episode, that, one, he was just uh, relying way too much on Mob to basically handle everything for him and basically using Mob as a tool rather than a person. And two, that, um, well, as we found out, he really was nothing without Mob. So he, he convinced Mob, rather, that the opposite was true, that Mob was nothing without him. But Mob, because of this growth he's been uh, going through, has started to realize that that's not true. He started to realize that his master has been lying to him. That, he, that he's been being used and that he needs to take a break. Um, I mean, the stuff Reagan said to Mob in this episode, like, w was fucked up. Like, completely fucked up. But at the same time, it, I feel it was more of uh, self-projection. Uh, Reagan was projecting his own, uh, like, deeply hidden issues onto Mob. We find out that Reagan's the one who doesn't really have friends. That Reagan's the one who's just kind of lived this, uh, 
life using people and not really having anything to himself. Um, we even see when he goes on, uh, on, on I'm just going to call it Facebook. When he goes on Facebook, um, we even see that no one's wished him a happy birthday except his mom. And even she's like, oh, you need to get a real job. Here, Here's a flyer. And it's just like, he, I think he's even starting to realize how shitty he's been. And so while he, while Mob is just off uh, living his life and hanging out with his friends and playing games with his brother and whatnot, going to karaoke even though he has no sense of rhythm, <laughs> um, he needs to talk to that librarian from Phineas and Ferb. Um, but in, in all seriousness, while Mob's doing all this, Reagan is actually also trying to make a change he's trying to do other stuff he's uh differentiating his workload but i feel like he's doing it for the wrong reasons he's getting more popular and that seems to be his focus here he's trying to gain that popularity kind of confusing it with um with friends with friendship because as we saw when he was in the bar he he was saying like though these people I know we know these people. I know who they are. I've worked with them in the past. They're they're kind of like friends, right? And I'm thinking that while he's saying that, I'm like thinking in my head, no, just that's not how that works. Um, they're basically uh, at best clients, <laughs> and at worst, um, friendly strangers. Um, they're not friends, and. I think he did start to realize that and that's why he was like so upset after only one drink why he was throwing up and everything it wasn't because like he was drunk or anything no i think he started to realize things but again he started to take things in the wrong direction because he started thinking oh if i can become popular that means that i'm gonna have more friends it means i'm gonna have more to do and i think it's more he's like he's one again confusing popularity with friendship but also I think he's also trying to just take his mind off of Mob abandoning him. I think Mob is one of the few people he did truly care for. One of the tr uh, only people that he ever really considered a friend. And I think he knows that he pushed him away. But he doesn't want to admit it to himself. He doesn't want to admit he could make that massive of a mistake. So he's trying to say like, oh, I I'm going to I'm going to thrive no matter what. I'm going to do my best anyways and it's like okay wanting to thrive and do your best otherwise that's not a terrible thing it's not a bad goal but he's using it as an excuse to ignore again what he did and he's trying to like almost uh, uh what we saw when he saw a mob hang out with his friends is like no way he actually has friends we see how little he actually did even though he I do think cared about Mob. We see how little he actually, uh, like how small he viewed him. That's a way to put it. We see that he kind of viewed Mob, even though he did care about him to a degree, I, he still viewed him as a tool. And he didn't see him as a human who could like be anything more than, than who he was. <laughs> He felt like Mob was being used by these people, like he didn't have any actual friends. And Mob has been used, very much so. Um, but he feels like that, like all of these people, like the Body Improvement Club and everyone, oh, they're just using you. I'm, I'm the only one who's truly here for Mob. That's kind of what his mindset seems to be. So when he sees Mob actually having fun and spending time with friends, it confuses him, it throws him off. So this episode seemed to be Reagan um, fucking up royally, realizing it, but not wanting to admit it. You can you can realize you did something, but not want to admit it and try to like avoid that by pushing the blame onto other things and focusing on other things instead of bettering yourself. And Reagan is definitely doing that from what I can tell. And I mean, I've done that. I think a lot of people have, to be fair. Um, but yeah, I, I've definitely fucked up in a lot of ways in my life. And there have been a lot of those cases where I would not admit I was wrong. And I would try to make excuses for it. 
I would do things like to try and take focus and attention away from it. And it's, it's messed up, but it's like, it's something I, I did and I won't argue that anymore. I will not only just acknowledge it, I will own up to it. And that's the thing. Again, Reagan is acknowledge, has acknowledged that he fucked up, but he's not owning up to it. He's acknowledged it, but he's trying to take his mind away from it by focusing on the wrong things and distracting himself from actually doing anything to truly better himself and to make the situation right. See, what he should have done is obviously confronted Mob, not in an aggressive way, of course, but confronted Mob and truly apologized, genuinely, truly apologized for using him, for treating him like shit, for treating him like a, like, like a tool, and, and for completely uh, disregarding Mob's personal life for all of this time that would have been a way to atone for what he did to not only acknowledge it but to make it better to actually do something about it but instead he just goes off in the other direction and runs with it so with the ending here we see that this other sidekick guy who was at the um uh, the, I, I, was he a business owner? I don't remember. Uh, but the rich guy's home to help exercise, uh, the evil spirit out of the girl. Um, and he's upset because Reagan, while he was possessed, Reagan, well, while this guy was possessed, he was kicked by Reagan. <laughs> um, so yeah, and he's upset about that. So he's trying to ruin Reagan's reputation right now. And I'll be honest, I hope it works. I hope Re Reagan's reputation shoots into the shitter, and I hope his business is ruined. A lot of this series, the a lot of the first season and even second season so far, um, the spirit, the spirits and such consultation office, it's been a main plot point. It's been a main setting for a lot of this. It's been a main part of uh, both Mob and Reagan's uh, characters. I want it to be destroyed here for two big reasons. One, I think that that will be the breaking point for Reagan. That will be where Reagan finally snaps, not only just realizes and acknowledges what he did, but will finally work to make it better and make himself better in the process. And two, I feel like the literal destruction of that and all not like litter okay not literal destruction but you know but the spirits and such consultation office and all that reagan's career as a psychic and everything i think that all of that falling apart will allow for some of the greatest development for both mob and reagan having them having all of this fall apart for reagan will allow for him to really become vulnerable as a character which would allow for him to do as I said and confront Mob and apologize in complete genuine sincerity. Which could allow for them to not become master and student again, but to become friends. To work together in a, in a codependent relationship. And I think that would be an amazing, amazing moment for the series. Now, I don't know if this is where it's going to go. I have no idea. I have not uh, seen, luckily, any spoilers, as I said, except for what I mentioned in the in my pre-thoughts about knowing that something really big happened in the recent episodes. Um, but yeah, I don't know where exactly this is going. But as I said, I want that to happen. I think it would be the best decision on the series at this point to just completely destroy Reagan's career. And 
I think after all of that is said and done, if his career is destroyed, if he and Mob make up and everything, and become friends and like codependent on each other rather than uh, a master-student relationship, they can begin to be not only just rebuild their relationship, but maybe rebuild their career as a duo instead. Not, and not as like some kind of scam situation like it used to be. But as a legitimate psychic duo. Reagan using his marketing and just intellectual skills while Mob uses his legitimate skills as the exorcist of the team. It could do so much wonders for the series. And I think if that were to happen, it would have my uh, interest in this series, which, as I mentioned in my pre-thoughts, is probably about like around 50% uh, before I watch this episode, um, which has raised, by the way. I will say that. It's raised a good amount, like probably 10 15% after this episode. Um, but if they did that, it would shoot up very significantly because that would be, like, the be again, the best thing they could do here. If Reagan is able to, uh, I, I feel the worst thing they could do is if Reagan is able to get past this. If Reagan, if his business and popularity uh, continue to succeed, if he manages to uh, uh, just work his way past this guy's scheme and everything, I, that would be the worst decision. Um it would show Reagan as, oh, I I've become strong on my own and everything. But at the same time, I feel that would completely ruin the just overall um, potential that this kind of plot holds. And it would really, in my eyes, hurt a lot of the possible character growth that both Mob and Reagan could have from this situation. <sighs> But we'll see where it goes. As usual, please, no spoilers in the comments below. Do not tell me if I'm right about anything, if I'm wrong about anything. Um, yeah, just no spoilers for anything from the future. Um, that being said, though, do tell me what you thought about this episode. What did you think about Ro uh, Reagan's royal fuck-up? What did you think about Mob finally uh, gaining the nerve to tell Reagan, no, fuck you and just go off on his own and have his own life and what do you think about how reagan is handling that tell me your thoughts on all that and more but again no spoilers uh yeah but tell me your thoughts on all that in the comments below and thank you so much for tuning in for now i'm connie and i'm signing off see y'all next time and though you've come through many obstacles